Hey guys, welcome back to part 4 of this DIY electric go-kart series. Last time we replaced the damaged plastic bracketry with a solid steel mount, did some minor cosmetic upgrades and I trialled some supercapacitors in parallel with my battery pack. In this video we're going to do some further experiments with the capacitors and we can discuss some pros and cons of using them. So let's jump into some quick theory. Here is the wiring diagram for the go-kart. We've added the capacitors in parallel with the batteries. When we first accelerate, the capacitors supply the energy to the motor because it has a lower ESR than the batteries. Once they deplete, the battery starts to compensate and supply current. As a negative side effect, the battery also has to try to replenish the capacitor bank. This results in a huge current draw and a lot of heat. So why would you want to use the supercaps then? This is how far it accelerates using just the capacitors until the voltage drops below my set threshold of 46 volts. Pretty underwhelming, right? Well, let's see how it can help accelerate the go-kart. I used a piece of chalk to make two lines around 50 meters apart, then I can line up the go-kart and I'll be using my phone to time each test. First we can try with just the batteries. It's not a foolproof method, but this is the time I got. 7.25 seconds, not too bad. So I did a test run using the capacitors, but annoyingly the file got corrupted. Here's the result anyway. 6.95 seconds, awesome. Since we achieved a small increase in acceleration, what would happen if we upgraded to larger capacitors? These are Eaton 400 farad 2.7 volt super caps. They have four times more capacity than the previous caps, and as a result, they're also much larger. I removed the capacitor banks from the go-kart, then I used a large DC motor to discharge them completely. After removing the AVX caps, we can install the new Eaton ones. These capacitors had two blank terminals for mechanical support, which were available for soldering on the balance PCBs. They look pretty serious now. I also forgot to mention just how light these are, they're so much lighter than they look. I've installed them back on the go-kart and I'm using a heavy duty DC power supply to pre-charge them. This way they won't suck all the current out of my batteries when we first connect them in parallel. I'm using a 20 watt 1 ohm resistor to limit the input current. I've sat it on an old PC heatsink and it's still getting really hot, so maybe I'll increase the resistance in the future. Alright, now let's see how far these caps go by themselves. So much better than the smaller caps before. Let's go back to our acceleration test now. Well it certainly felt a lot quicker, let's see how we did. 6.21 seconds, that's more than 1.5 seconds difference, so it's definitely an improvement. This is pretty budget editing but you get the idea, and you can see that the caps made a big difference in acceleration. So I guess that my concept is proven and it's given me positive results, but it's also raised a few more issues. At the start of this video I described the heat build up from these batteries trying to balance the capacitors and supply current to the motor. Well, take a look at this. The terminal on this battery got so hot it melted and the battery stopped working. This meant the system voltage dropped below the minimum and I had to push the go-kart back. So I'm in the market now for a new battery pack and it'll probably be an 18650 custom job. I know it's been done before, but at least it'll be a little beefier than the saddle packs I've been using and will still be interesting to see. I'm also open to suggestions, so feel free to drop a comment. Even though there is still room for improvement, this thing is heaps of fun. My brother Jace was impressed anyway.
thanks heaps for watching. I'll see you guys in the next part.